when you got born again the first voice of the holy spirit is the voice of the milk the, you see you definitely have to come under a tutelage under a pastor under an apostle under a teacher who will teach you the basic principles of the doctrines of christ that's what you need a child has no capacity to understand the language of his parent at an infant age but a, a child can feel can sense the heartbeat of his parent but cannot understand the language has no understanding of how life is what goes on in life and and dangers around him the child does not know that there are killers in that country a child does not know that it, it, even though if an armed robber comes in with a gun the child wouldn't even know that that gun is capable of ending his life and you get what i'm trying to say now you see that the child becomes absolutely dependent on the parent so the voice of the spirit of god is first heard through your shepherd as an infant baby in christ the bible says the zoya the sincere milk of the word that you might grow thereby so what does that mean it means that before you are developed to hear the voice of the holy ghost first you would have to hear the voice of your shepherd because the voice of your shepherd should reflect the voice of the Holy Spirit. So the shepherd becomes your voice. The shepherd becomes the voice you hear first. The shepherd begins to nurture and develop you to a point where you can now learn how to hear the voice of the Father. Remember what happened to Samuel? Samuel was an infant in the ministry of the prophetic. And of course, he didn't know how to discern the voice of God. But somewhere, somehow, the voice of God sounded like the voice of his father in the Lord. You see that? So God came to him with the voice that was similar to the voice of his father. You know why? Because when you sit under a father, you are trained to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. So in that process, you develop spiritually to be able to hear the voice of God yourself. And then in that process, you realize that the voice of God is the voice that leads every human, every man, every child of God to holiness. You see, every time we begin to hear his voice, it is actually a calling unto sanctification. Because there comes a time where the voice you hear after you have been sanctified would then be the voice of his purpose. You see, you can be hearing the voice of God right now, but that voice has nothing to do with accomplishing or representing any of God's callings. But God will call you to acknowledge his voice in order to walk in the way of holiness, in order to walk in the way of sanctification. In that process, you begin to lose every field that is in your thoughts, every field that is in your mind, every field that is in your conduct. And so in that process, as you're hearing the voice of God, the the Spirit of God will lead you even to be tested of the devil. The Spirit of God will lead you back to the struggles that you used to have in the past to see how far you have overcome it. He is both your teacher and he also will test you. He will you know, check you out because you see, every teacher wants to subject his or her students under examination. And if you succeed or if you pass the exam, then you are qualified for the next glorification. You are qualified for the next advancement. So there are different levels of God's glory that is required to qualify a man to represent the callings of God or the purposes of God for creation. But in multiple channels, of this voice of the Holy Spirit must be understood, opened, and must be acknowledged in order to qualify to host the fullness of God. Can I hear amen like a thunder, sons of God? Now, the Bible says in the book of 
Titus chapter 2 verse number 11 to 12 for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and what they lost so Jesus Christ is the grace of God that has appeared to all men so it is very easy all right to receive the dividend of the appeared grace but it's not mostly easy to receive the teachings the instructions of the voice of grace because the voice of grace is not Jesus the voice of grace is the Holy Spirit but in principle of course the Holy Spirit is Jesus but this is another version of Jesus that is a custodian of a certain reality of God so if you don't qualify the in the ministry and influence of the Holy Spirit if you don't come under the ministry and the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is an aspect of God's excellence that you will never inherit. Now, if you believe in Jesus, there, there are blessings that are within that dimension. So your faith in Christ will give you the gift of righteousness. Your faith in Christ will qualify you to host Christ in your spirit. Of course, your faith in Christ will eradicate, will erase your sins and bring you to an absolute state of justification. But that is not going to guarantee the fullness of God. That is not going to guarantee that you're going to step into all that salvation brings. So there is another aspect of Christ that is called the Holy Spirit. There is a voice that is called the voice of Christ. And that voice of Christ is only heard through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So that, that's what Titus what, you know, said here. He said, the grace of God has appeared to all men. All right, so now salvation has come through the grace of God. But not all men want to hear the voice, the teaching of the grace of God. Not all men want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Not all, because to hear the voice of the Spirit is to be in alignment with the instructions and commands of the voice of grace or what we call the voice of the Holy Spirit. So the victory is not in the hearing. The victory is not just in the gift of salvation. The victory is in the hearing and in the doing. You see, deception is when you have heard and did not do. You have deceived yourself. The Bible says, be doers of the word not hear us only deceiving your own selves so there is what we call deception in the last days take heed Jesus said that no man deceive you so who are these deceivers you see sometimes we think that the deception of the end times will come from outside the church you don't know what deception is. The greatest outburst of deceit in these last days will come from believers in churches. It will come from pastors. It will come from elders. It will come from deacons. It will come from church folks that have been in church for 20 years, 40 years. Church folks who do not practice what they have heard they are going to be the promoters of deception you must understand is it take heed that they who hear the word of god and do not do what it says deceive you take heed that no man deceive you what is deception according to scripture they who have heard the voice of the holy spirit and do not do what the Spirit is saying. And when they don't do what the Spirit has said, they become deceivers. Because they themselves have been deceived. They are deception themselves. And they are living in deceit. And they will deceive you because you cannot give what you don't obey. 
You cannot be what you don't respect. And you cannot receive what you don't reciprocate to.